welcome to Whistle of the Week. So this is the Walton's Sea Whistle in uh, regular brass. Um, it is made in Dublin, Ireland. Walton's has been around since 1922, apparently. To get right on with the pros, I really enjoy playing this whistle. It's a comfortable whistle. It's well balanced. I think I can set it on my finger right about there. If I can keep it from rolling. It's not too chiffy. It's not too shrill. Once you really kind of dig in and, and get your fingering down, it, it's not super jumpy. It's going to take some practice with breath control with any whistle, but it's not particularly shrieky or unstable whistle. It has a nice mellow tone. If I were to say that this particular whistle had any cons, um, it would be that, like most mass production whistles, it has an injected molded headpiece. And for some reason, they, the way they mold them, it leaves a cavity down here underneath the windway that ends here. So you have this empty space that causes a little tornado of air in there that adds a hissiness to the sound. It, it can make it sort of create a bigger volume difference between the first octave and the second octave when you're overblowing. It's necessary to sort of caveat this and say that I have filled that cavity in almost all of my cheap whistles with blue tack. Or if you're in the States, it might be fun tack by Loctite. It's, it's a sort of a gummy poster adhesive. And what you do is you take the head off, you cram a bunch of that into that cavity under the windway, and then you know use something flat to make it flush. And it eliminates that turbulence in there and helps stabilize the sound of the whistle. That helps with cheapo whistles a lot. I'm not exactly playing these stock. There is that little, little tiny tweak in there. It's a really good, solid whistle to learn on, and it's been a really good whistle for me. It still remains one of the best under $20 whistles that I've gotten a hold of. This is probably going to be the longest of these videos. Uh, my intention was to make them short, about five to six minutes, so that you could get through them and then watch the next one, see the next whistle. Um, but since this is the first one, I felt like there was some introduction necessary. I got it because my son got an ocarina for Christmas, and I wanted something to toot around on as well. I had seen a really interesting um, pirate band, all acoustic instruments, um, doing sort of piratey renditions of Irish trad tunes and, and other compositions of their own. Really, really enjoyed their show. And there was a guy who played the tin whistle and sometimes Irish flutes in their ensemble. It just, it, it kind of made me go, hey, I want to learn to do that. It was just fitting that I use this for the first video in this series. I think this tin whistle is an instrument that just about anyone can learn, and it's not overly complicated. It's just six holes. The complexities really come with learning how to, you know, improve your own technique in terms of, you know, little taps and cuts and ornaments and how much breath pressure is required. This video isn't really for experts. The purpose of these videos is to make it simple for a beginner to look up a particular cheap whistle, listen to it, hear my thoughts on it, take a look at it, and make maybe a more informed choice on what they're spending their hopefully only maybe eight to fifteen, eight to thirty dollars on. A beginner really shouldn't be buying a McManus or some, you know, massively expensive boutique whistle. Simply because, just like with a, a, a kid in band and a saxophone, you have no idea if that's what you're going to really like, if that's what you're going to stick with. You might want to play the mandolin or, or something else instead. But chances are, if you get a halfway decent beginner whistle and spend a little time with it, you're going to want to. I'm not a great whistle player. I am probably a little shy of what I would call intermediate. I'm a vocalist, lyricist, and I play a handful of other instruments, percussion, guitar, bass. I have used whistles as 
accompaniment or harmonic thing or or counterpoint little melody bits in my recordings with my band the Red Delta Orchestra and on my solo records I sometimes play trad tunes though sometimes I play jazz sometimes I play a little Bach piece it just depends on what mood I'm so if you're a person who's just starting out don't necessarily listen to all the gatekeepers that say that you should only play Irish trad or that you should only play this instrument in one particular way. It's your instrument. It's your music. You play the instrument. The instrument doesn't play you. And it's not about all those other people. So don't get discouraged that you can't run through Cooley's Reel at 180 BPM or that maybe you have an application for this that is different from what other people think is the right one. There is no right one. It's music because I say it is. It's the way it should be because I said it was that and I made it that. And that's how you should look at your music. Anyway, enough pontificating. I tend to not prefer the bare brass whistles. I prefer the, you know, usually nickel plated whistles because although many people say they can't hear the difference, many people can hear the difference. And I think, although a lot of what goes on with your tone has to do with this part right here, the mouthpiece, the fipple, and how it is constructed, the material in the body has some effect. Bare brass resonates a bit more freely, and so it tends to have a mellower, sort of darker tone, maybe a more airy tone, where a lot of times a nickel-plated whistle will sound tighter and more focused, more sort of bright in a way and that's generally what I like in whistles. This whistle is kind of middle of the road so it was kind of fortuitous that this was the first one that I bought. What happened was I realized that this is a sea whistle and I to play trad music everyone everyone says you need to have a D whistle. Well that's kind of true but you can learn to play the same tunes with the same fingering just in whatever key you're playing on whatever whistle you have. But that set me on this quest to try different whistles because I bought a D whistle and then I bought another D whistle and then I started to notice the differences in how they handle and their tone. So after a couple of years of this and 50 some whistles later I decided to do this series of videos so that a beginner could look up a particular whistle, sort of appraise what they're hearing, what I have to say about it, and, you know, I'm not the end-all, be-all expert. I'm not even that great of a whistle player, but I do know about sound and tone. I want beginners to see these things and be able to make their own informed choices that don't necessarily require them to buy 40 different D whistles. Because, as I said, you don't know what you're looking for. You don't know what they sound like. You don't know if you're even going to stick with the instrument. So years later, and a lot of practice later, that's when you're talking about investing in, in something boutique and excellent. Thanks for watching Whistle of the Week. I'm Wolf Downard, and we'll see you again soon.